In this video, I'm gonna go through the top paying developer jobs that you can find, and this is to help you decide where to focus your studies, whether in university or on your own, in order to maximize your chances of getting a top paying job as a software developer. For the jobs that I've found, they have average starting salaries of around $75,000 per year in the US, and most of them have the potential to increase up to $100,000 per year on average within about one to four years of experience. And those are just averages, and those averages are based on thousands of reported salaries. So uh, yeah, let's go with job number one, which is DevOps specialist. This includes site reliability engineer and DevOps engineer as well, because the differences here aren't super clear, which is why all of this kind of falls under the category of DevOps. DevOps, which basically just stands for developer operations, which is what this job is all about. A DevOps specialist is basically meant to help improve and manage all aspects of the software development lifecycle. And as you might be able to tell by the name, it is very broad, which is why it's sometimes the distinction between the different DevOps roles is sometimes a bit blurry. The starting salary that you can expect here is around $70,000 per year and will evolve into anywhere from $100,000 to $140,000 per year after 10 years of experience. And all of these numbers are based on averages, so that means that there can be a bit of variance depending on location, experience, and other things. The total average salary for all of the reported salaries is around $96,000 per year. And according to the survey that was conducted by Stack Overflow in 2020, 12% of the respondents who said they were actively looking for work were DevOps specialists, which means that it had the second lowest rating out of 22 totals and it ended up in the 20th spot, which could indicate that the job opportunities within this role are really good. And this is also indicated by the overall job market consensus and the fact that this has become a trending job within the last couple of years. Typically, you'll need a bachelor's degree to get a job as a DevOps specialist, but I will also add that self-taught developers with the right experience can pretty much get any developer job. The next job is software architect, and software architects are usually responsible for creation, maintenance, and updates of software. They usually manage a team of developers and delegate these sort of tasks. Software architects will generally again require a bachelor's degree in a software related field, but for those without a bachelor's degree, experience in a related role or certification or both will greatly improve your chances. The starting salary that you can expect here is around $85,000 per year with a potential increase to $100,000 within one to four years of working. And on average, it tops out around $140,000 per year after 10 years or more of experience, with the total average salary being around $127,000 per year. Next, we have full stack developer and full stack devs tend to end up on the top of most lists of the highest paying software developer jobs. The good thing here is that this role tends to require a little bit less experience before you get to those high salaries compared to some of the other jobs on this list where you usually need a bit of experience within like working within a company and sometimes even like developing within the company to the role that you want. And so with full stack, you can potentially even get hired straight out of school into that role, which is really good, especially if you're intentional with how you utilize your studies and how you specialize within your studies, which means that this is one of the best routes to take in my opinion. It's also a good starting point for becoming a DevOps specialist, for instance, because a DevOps specialist essentially needs to know everything involved in the development lifecycle in order to be able to organize and improve it, meaning that having the full stack knowledge will definitely put you on the right track. Then once you start working within a team, make sure to again be intentional with how you work there and take initiative to take on more responsibility for the team by becoming a scrum master, for instance. And this sort of stuff is what you can then use to evolve into a DevOps specialist. The starting salary that can be expected here is around $66,000 per year and tops out around $100,000 per year after 10 years of experience. And the total average salary is around $78,000 per year. The thing to note here is that this is, like I've said, a relatively easy job to get. And based on Stack Overflow's survey from 2020, around 55% of all respondents identify as full stack developers. This means that the average salaries here are being influenced a lot more by the variance within this group compared to some of these other jobs that I've listed. So the fact that the average salaries are still this high is actually quite surprising. And to me, it's a good sign of reliability in that this is actually a high paying role. If we look at other data like developers who are looking for a job from the same survey, we see that full stack devs are in the 15th place out of 22. 
which is really interesting because since this is also the most common developer job, we would expect to see it rank fairly highly on this list because of the loss of supply and demand. But the fact that it still ranks really low on this list could be an indication that there's still more demand for full stack developers than there is supply, which bodes well for this to be a career choice. All right, so now I would just like to take a quick second to talk about AppSumo, which is today's video sponsor. And AppSumo is a place where you can find deals on memberships to apps. And they work with these really big apps to create deals for you so that you can sign up for these business plans or premium plans at a way lower price. And the really cool part is that most of AppSumo's deals are for life. So if you sign up for something really cheap today, then you will have that price for life, which is really awesome. And a lot of times these business versions or premium versions of apps offer a lot of really nice features that you actually want. A great example here is that right now they have a lifetime deal on Power, which is a tool that I've used a lot for creating really nice website forms and widgets of different kinds. And this is a really great tool for anyone looking to get into or who is already into e-commerce related things. It's super helpful for creating high quality forms and widgets that can be used for, for instance, collecting emails that you will then use to increase your conversion rates. I highly recommend checking out Power on AppSumo. It's a great app and a great deal. And AppSumo's products will save you thousands of dollars. And as a special bonus for the channel, AppSumo is giving $20 of free credits to the first 500 people who click the link in the video description. So if you're looking for great tools to help you and your business, then hit the link in the video description below to check out AppSumo. And again, remember the first 500 people who click the link will get $20 of free credits, or you can use the code Cal with capital letters. Okay, for the next job, we have Data Scientist. This is also a job that frequently tops out the list for the highest paying developer jobs out there. The only downside here is that with this job, you essentially need not only a bachelor's degree, but you also need a master's degree in most cases. And this is something that compared to some of these other jobs where you only need to do three years of studying and get your bachelor's degree, and then you can get hired and start making money. And in most cases, you don't even need those three years. You don't need to do your bachelor's degree to get hired. With data science, you need to do five years of studying. But it is one of the highest paying jobs that you can find. It also has a pretty high starting salary, which can be nice. And the average starting salary that you find and can expect in the US is around $85,000 per year. And the top range that you can expect to be earning is around $120,000 to $140,000 per year after around 10 to 20 years of experience. But there aren't any guarantees for any of these things. And salaries similar to this can be attained through other paths as well. And the average total salary for data scientists is around $96,000 per year. However, do consider the fact that with this, you would have spent two more years studying. And this in many countries, luckily not here in Sweden, but in many other countries, this means that you would have built up two more years of student loan debt, which is not a trivial thing at all. Whereas if you would have just done a bachelor's degree and then gotten hired as a full stack developer, then you would have been able to work for those two years and potentially even getting a pay raise during that time, which means you would have made even more money. And you would have also been able to pay off some of that student loan debt from before those three years. And compare this to like doing the data science thing where you basically build up two more years of student loan debt. And then at the end of it, you potentially could end up getting the same starting salary as a full stack developer who only did a bachelor's degree or maybe didn't even have a bachelor's degree. I will also say though that the likelihood is that the data scientist will get a higher starting salary. Another interesting thing here is that if we look at the survey again by Stack Overflow that asked what developers were looking for a job, which could be used as an indication of unemployment rates, we see that data scientists and other jobs that are essentially other words but mean that they are effectively data scientists, all of them seem to end up at the top of the list, which indicates that there could be some difficulty here regarding finding a job. This is something that to me doesn't really add up from everything that I know about the field of software development, not that I know all that much, but from what I know, this result basically contradicts all of that because in general, software development, the field of software development has really low unemployment rates and it's basically because of the fact that there's just such a high demand for software developers right now. So anyone that has a little bit of skill within this field will generally be able to get a job actually. So that's why it doesn't really make sense to me. But there is something about this survey that's kind of hidden. We don't know why people responded what they responded. And this specific survey was people looking for work, which could be interpreted as unemployment, like people are, that are unemployed looking for work. But it could also be the case, or it could be the opposite case in this 
instance where essentially data scientists are replying that they're looking for work, but they might already have work essentially. So it could be that they're they have so many opportunities and they have so many things or fields that they could dive into that they're pretty much always looking for something new to try out because they have the potential to do it. And it could also even be the fact that they're making so much money from each job that they're working at that they may not need to be working all the time. So they might be that they just work for a shorter bit period of time, make a bit of money, save something up, and then basically quit their job for a while and just live off their savings and then look for work sporadically throughout that time, which could indicate the opposite thing. So we're not really sure why this was the case, which is why I just wanted to mention this so that we know that the results of the surveys or these surveys can be interpreted in lots of different ways and some ways can even be contradictory. So some of the things that I've said might sound a little bit harsh on the data scientists, which is not my intention at all, because it can be one of the most interesting fields to be working in, especially if you like statistics and mathematics, then this should be a no brainer for you. It should already be really appealing to you. But even if you don't like that, it can still be really interesting because data scientists will generally work on really interesting projects and often be involved in a lot of artificial intelligence and also the frontier of new technologies in general so it makes for a really interesting career choice. Okay, so that's it, and those are the top paying developer jobs out there, and when doing this I wanted to exclude any jobs that were too managerial and too like, where you needed to work your way up within a company for years and years until you could get to that job. And this means that I also excluded some jobs that required those sort of things, but that can be just as well paid as any of the jobs that I mentioned, or better paid as well. But I, essentially the goal was to find jobs that you could study your way to. So uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, before you go, I also want to mention that I have a Patreon page where I create some courses. Right now I've created a course on how to build a trading bot that's live and you will get, that, get access to that in full if you sign up. But there's no pressure to sign up or anything like that. And again, I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope I'll see you in the next one.